Right, hello, welcome back to another video, um, and welcome to 2020. It's been a little while since my last update. Um, been working full time, so haven't really had the time, but back to part time now. So hopefully, going to be carrying on making a few of these videos, aiming for in a week. But yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. So, um, so what are we doing today? So today, I wanted to talk about uh, one of the topics I find that people kind of struggle with a little bit when they're starting out. Uh, it's one of the more sort of introductory topics uh, and that is UVs, object UVs, what they are, um, why they're called UVs, how can we use them, what an unwrap is, different ways we can do unwraps and sort of the pros and cons of those. Um, so let's get started. Right, uh, we have here a very simple basic cube. It is an object in 3D space. Um, it has um, a position and values um, in X, Y, and Z. So if you can move it, translate X, uh, Y, oops, Y up in Maya, and Z. So it has components in those 3D space, and X, Y, and Z are the uh, axes of the 3D space. So I keep saying 3D space. Um, that means there must be a 2D space. So if we imagine we have a 3D object and we want to apply a texture to it, uh, textures are obviously two-dimensional. Um, so we need some way to convert something from 3D into 2D, uh, and that's what a UV is doing for us. So if we have a look here at the default unwrap, it's taken each of those faces uh, and aligned them or arranged them in a 2D space. And if I preview a little animation, um, that's kind of what it's doing. So you can see it uh, has taken that 3D object uh, and unwrapped it. Oops, put the basic material back on it. So um, fundamentally, that's what UVs are doing. They, they're a way of us uh, converting a 3D space object uh, into 2D space so that we can then apply textures um, which will render in our 3D scene. Um, cool, hopefully that makes sense. So why are they called UVs? Um, well, the coordinates of um, 3D space are X, Y, and Z. Um, in 2D space, it's actually not technically 2D space. There is a W component, it's UVW. It's very rare that we use that in video games. Um, and computer graphics at all, you can load in what are called volume textures that are textures that have three dimensions to them. Um, so we don't really use any of those, so we're going to cover uh, sort of gloss over that for now. But but that's where the UV comes from. So it's U V W X Y Z. It's just the three letters previous to X Y and Z. Um, so that's the coordinates of 3D space. These are the coordinates of 2D space or U V space. Um, but actually, there's a W in there that we don't really ever use. Um, Cool. So hopefully that uh, that will make sense. Um, how can we use it? Well, let's go over to a little uh, demo scene I have in Photoshop. Uh, let's imagine we have a five by five grid, um, nicely laid out here. If I plot out the numbers of each of these columns and how far they are along uh, the horizontal axis or the x-axis or possibly the red axis or the u-axis, um, all of those things are sort of interchangeable really. Um, the first column is going to be at zero along this, this direction, second one 0.25, middle one 0.5 and finally up to, to one. Um, and you, hopefully you can see, uh, yeah that's my kind of like values along that axis. Uh, if I were to do the, the other coordinate, so in this case it would be V uh, or the green channel, um, same thing, so the first row is at zero, second one 0 0.25, 0 0.5, etc. Um, and if I put them both on, hopefully you can see that each one of these squares, each one of these uh, kind of pixels, um, is completely unique. Zero, zero identifies this top corner and no other uh, has the same coordinate reference, same one, one. Um, so it's a way of creating a unique grid of different pixel values. Um, and if we were to replace our uh, our numbers uh, with colours. Um, you can see zero black. That's at this end. 100% red on this side. Um, 0.5 red in the middle. And if we did that for both the red and green channels at the same time, you can see we've got something that might look a little bit familiar. Um, it's the UV square. So this is obviously only a 5 by 5 grid. Um, it's pretty low resolution, blocky. But if we go over to our uh, Unreal, you can see same colours, same thing happening. It's the um, the red and green channels, and so each one of these pixels is completely unique. And because we can have different size textures, 
Um, we don't want to change our setting here based on whether it's a 512 or a 1024 uh, texture says resolution. So these gradients, uh, the red and the green gradients, are actually mathematically defined. So 0 is defined in here, 1 is defined there, and then it's linearly interpolated as many times uh, as it needs to for each pixel in there. And we actually use these all the time in making materials where we want to have a gradient. Um, you can just grab a text code. Uh, Unreal does this with its function linear gradients. Um, and if you open it up, it is doing exactly that, taking the UV coordinates and just masking out a red or green channel. So, um, good to know. Really good way of creating nice, cheap, mathematically accurate, uh, perfect gradients. So, cool. Let's get a little bit more complicated. If we go back to Maya, we've got our um, unwrap for our cube. Um, so what different ways can we actually use this to do our unwrap? Well, you might say, what's the point? Why are we using UVs? We could just put our texture on the cube automatically. Um, but there's some advantages we have by doing it via UVs. Um, let me set this back to the oops, default for now. So here we are, that default cube with the default unwrap. There's a couple of things that aren't great about this. Uh, there's a lot of wasted space. Um, these textures here are never well, these pixels here are never going to get rendered. Uh, so if we put a 512 texture on this, we're only getting about maybe a third um, percentage usage from that. So it's not the best unwrap in the world. If we go on to, to this cube, all I've done is an automatic. Um, just projected each face. Uh, and you get a better result. Um, there's more uh, more used space now, less wastage. Um, and one of the big advantages of why we used sort of this intermediate step where we have the 2D, the 3D faces in 2D space with the UVs and then the uh, the texture applied is we can overlap things. So if I took this face, I could do this um, and I could sort of overlap all these textures and we'd see the same pixels, so the same sort of texture were being rendered on these um, on these faces um, but you can also get a lot of extra reuse out of things, uh, a lot of more efficiency um, to the point where you could actually map each face individually. So each one of these faces is now completely mapped. You're going to start seeing tiling, you're going to start seeing repetition. Um, that's a different problem that we can solve in other ways, but um, as always with these kind of UVs or with a lot of things in, in video game graphics, it's a trade-off. Uh, this has got completely unique unwrap. Um, this one's got the most possible repeats, um, but you can see um, they're both the same cube, just unwrapped in slightly different ways. Um, and if I apply my UV gradients, um, you can see we're getting the different colours on there. Um, cool. Uh, obviously, we can go in and edit these at the UV space. Uh, if we had just applied a texture without using this sort of intermediate UV step, uh, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do that. You wouldn't have that power uh, to go in and quickly edit things at the UV level um, and when you've got things objects that are sharing the same texture it's nice to be able to go in and control how that texture is being applied cool uh, cubes are good it's decent uh, sort of variety in different things but maybe we could give something a little bit more exciting um, columns not the most uh, exciting thing but there we are um, we can see here I should reset this as well is that not going to be anti-sandy shared? There we go. Um, so here I have unwrapped my column in such a way that it's all one big island uh, and I've straightened it all out. Um, and there's a couple of issues here. Well, one thing I want to sort of highlight, um, if we want these squares to be uh, to be square, so this would be how we would unwrap an object if we were maybe using a tiling texture. So tiling textures do what they say, uh, they tile, so anything that where the pixels go off one edge they match with the other one. There's lots of information out there about how to make tiling textures and um, all that setup and things, um, but the important thing that we can do with the tiling texture is we can either tile it in engine, which set up our material to have parameters that let us to do the tiling, uh, or we can tile it with our UVs, we can change the UVs here. Um, because the material is going to tile top to bottom, we don't have to have our UVs within the certain grid, um, we can scale them up and you'll see now these textures are now square. Um, we are getting a little bit of distortion up here, um, I've 
straightened out all of these edges and so uh, it's these aren't straight so there's a bit of distortion um, why have I done that well we would need to not have a seam so because it's a tiling texture I know that the left side and the right side um, will match continuously with, with, the, with each other um, and so this then gives us that uh, that functionality of allowing that to use a seamless tiling texture but there is a little bit of, of distortion because of it if I scaled this out you can see we're getting that uh, that seam is now going to be visible in that distortion but we can always scale by exactly two if I scale that by two scale that up um, you can see that I've now got a seam, seamless tiling texture on my column um, really useful for environments a lot of environments are made of a lot of the same surface we don't want completely unique unwraps for all of our walls we're going to want to use tiling textures um, and so we're going to have to unwrap our objects in such a way as to work with those tiling materials um, that's cool a bit more uh, level of, of complexity I suppose next level up a bit more detail um, middle piece here is still using that same idea of that tiling you can move this around in UV space or scale it um, again if we scale it non-uniformly um, or rather so it's not a an equal space you're going to get a seam but you can always turn your column and hide the seam if that's if that's possible um, so what have I done here well actually I've taken these top and bottom pieces and I've done what I would use a trim sheet and wrap um, so trim sheets you can have a look uh, not super complicated they're basically tiling materials or tiling textures but they only tile in one direction so the left and the right here are supposed to be seamless um, but then obviously the top and bottom don't match but you don't want to have lots of really long and thin textures so what we do is you pack multiple trims into the same material or the same texture so you wouldn't be expecting to see all of this at once but you can pick between different things that work in the same material type so brick walls you tend to have little bits of detail sci-fi panels this kind of thing um, and they they tile horizontally but then you only see a bit of them vertically um, and that's what I've done here with these so um, you can see I can scale these get a different uh, resolution depending on what I need um, and then the, uh, the the trim if I wanted to change the trim I can move it up and down to match the texture so still using tiling materials but here it's a main tiling material and then a trim tile um, for the tops and bottoms uh, it is two materials they would have to be applied as two materials uh, unless you did some sort of complex material setup um, so you are adding some extra cost but you're getting quite a lot more visual fidelity because you're using multiple trims or, or multiple textures uh, and just adding that extra detail where it's necessary at the trim um, cool right uh, sometimes you have a, a, a hero column um, so this is what uh, where you would have, I don't know, sort of like a, a Z brush sculpt or a, a sort of finely painted substance painter um, texture. Uh, and here, each part of the object has been unwrapped uniquely. So there's no repeating textures, there's no repeating pixels, no overlaps, anything like that. And here, everything does need to stay inside the 0 to 1 square. Because when you're baking, if you're baking with um, like a sculpt, if things are outside of 0 to 1, they won't bake correctly. Um, it won't pick up these edges so completely different workflow um, totally valid uh, advantages here obviously you get a much higher quality result you're not repeating those tiling things uh, it takes a lot longer to do because you have to put the time into doing things like the sculpt um, and also the resolution of your texture here if this was a I don't know 1024 texture that's going to be spread over this column this size um, based on those UVs we've got reasonable usage up here maybe I don't know 20 20 percent wastage um, so you're gonna get most of that 1024 but with the tiling we could go in and create a I don't know 512 tiling texture and then render it twice and you'll see uh, the pixel resolution in the final screen will be the same but the um, texture resolution on in memory you've loaded in a 512 texture and displayed it four times as opposed to using a 1024 bake um, and like I say there's ways we can combine some of these techniques together uh, combine tiling and unique bakes uh, but I think that's going to be a topic for another video so um, 
I hope that makes sense. I hope that demystifies a little bit of what UVs kind of are uh, and why we might want to use them. There's definitely uh, a lot of advantages to knowing uh, kind of like how we can use UVs. Uh, it's very rare there's a right and wrong answer. It's just about making that balance and trade-off between uh, reuse of assets uh, and optimization uh, and time and how long is it going to take. It'd be great if we could have unique bakes and everything for, for every object, but unfortunately that's just not really a possibility. Um, so like I say, hope that is helpful. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments or uh, want to let me know, um, request a tutorial, etc., um, please do either email me or, or comments below. Um, and also, if you're enjoying these videos, I have set up a little Patreon. So um, I really enjoy doing them. I'd love to do more. Um, I'd love to improve my, my setup a little bit. Um, so if you would like to support me, please follow that link and do so. And I will see you all next time.